Good afternoon, everyone. I'm your host, Logis, and I'm pleased to welcome you to our webinar, How to Stay Resilient and Succeed with a Career Transition. Now, I'm very glad to have you all joining us today, especially when you're in the midst of work. And um, let's begin with introducing our founder and general manager, Daylon So. Um, we also have a special guest, Gail Lau, who will be sharing more about herself um, shortly. So Daylon is a change maker who aspires to transform the education landscape. He has more than 10 years of experience working at the intersection of technology design and marketing. Now, over to you, Daylon. All right, uh, Gil, welcome to our special well, webcast session uh, live in our classroom here today. Hi, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for joining, uh, everyone. Um, I'm Dalen, and I'm the founder and general manager at Curious Call. So today we have a special guest, which is Gil. Uh, Gil has been in teleacquisition in both startups and VCs for the last four to five years. And I've gotten her today to have an informal discussion together with me on the current uh, situation, which we are seeing a lot of tech layoffs and uh, it might also be quite a tough period for uh, job candidates who want to transition into the tech sector. So we'll be sharing a few strategies today as well as some of the common mistakes that uh, when Gil used to be in talent acquisition that she saw candidates make. Mm -hmm. So I think to we'll start off, uh, we'll, uh, I just read that Disney is um, cutting some people off mm -hmm. uh, today and 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 that's because they are anticipating lower subscriptions um, in the coming year. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've seen a few other companies uh, done cuts anywhere between 5% uh, to 15% uh, of their entire workforce. Uh, and these cuts have also affected uh, Asia Pacific, which includes uh, Singapore. So, Gil, just to ask you, you know, like what, what do you, what's your general sense of the situation uh, on the ground based on your observation? As I also understand, your husband works in the tech sector. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, since twenty nineteen, right, which was where the pandemic started, uh, it, it was already kind of like there was ballooned spending. Mm. There was a lot of like you know spending from consumers and also there was a lot of demand for talent. Um, so a lot of the um, predictions were saying that after the pandemic period, it is expected that cus uh, companies will start to lay off. And I think that's what we're seeing here. Um, but in, in addition to customer spending, I mean, that includes like ad spending as well. So with all these um, projections, um, obviously, if, co if companies are not going to make that much money, then they will not have a need for so much talent right mm. so i think that's one uh number two is also like um lower like the, the need to have lower burn right you have in a lot of companies have investors um so these layoffs also happen at a time where investors are asking um for for uh, companies to be more profitable mm. right um they want to see more green instead of like red, red yeah. uh mm. and also like reckless spending um third thing is high high interest rates Mm. right um and then obviously like, i think with everyone noticing the boom in ai um a few months ago it was all metaverse and like uh, web3 Web right crypto. right now there is a huge um spin towards ai with i think google just announcing a rival um what, what's the other company uh, my, uh, microsoft, microsoft acquired acquired chat gpt yes. and google having a, a, a rival service for chat gpt yes and i think tencent mm. or like some chinese company yeah. as well so a lot of these companies when they're shifting um gears into another direction obviously they want to cut off projects that are not strategic mm. um so that's where like you know the layoffs are happening yeah yeah it's actually quite scary how fast the tech industry moves mm -hmm. um and we're seeing a lot of workers affected, like even in Google that we have people who work for a very, very long time uh, and, and are high performers, they got cut as well. Yep. So um, if let's say today I'm I'm someone who has a job in the tech industry, how how do you think I, I should kind of like uh, prepare myself, uh, for example? So um, I think for these periods where you know um, there are layoffs happening I think one of the advice is to be a generalist and not a specialist mm. um, and so uh, the other the other thing I heard about Facebook is that they are cutting out managers more or even asking them to become individual contributors right so no managers just doing the work yeah. yes correct mm. like okay. I think 
what I, one thing I, I seen as well was um, Elon Musk was saying at Twitter, there were like 10 managers managing, no, for every person coding, there are 10 managers. Oh my God, that's yes. a lot. Yeah. Yes. So um, I think that's one, like be a generalist, um, also like see if you can, you know, kind of like contribute to the revenue, yes, um, generating parts important. of the companies. Um, third, I think one thing that's good is um, a lot of people that were laid off were more um, educated and also employable. Mm. So I, I wouldn't be too worried because there are a lot of jobs out there. Mm. Yeah. So talking about that, actually, uh, I heard there's this um, so-called packing order. Mm -hmm. And the packing order is this, whereby let's say you you work for a tier one tech startup, uh, you will have jobs in tier two. Mm. Uh, and if you work for tier two, then maybe you have jobs in like some of the service sectors or the bigger MNCs. And if you work for the bigger MNCs, at least you'll have jobs in SMEs. So there's always like, uh, so it's kind of, it, do you, in your perspective, is it kind of, um, what do you think on that pecking order? Is it like true from your observation? Uh, I think that is a simplification mm. of, of uh, the picture. Um, a couple of things, like maybe one is perhaps they have similar um, markets or similar like um, uh, customers to serve, mm. especially if uh, tier two are growing to become tier one. <laughs> That's true. Yes. Yes. Yeah, we don't know, right? Like, we don't know. Especially if the strategy works. Let's say they invest in AI and then, oh yeah, they, they become right. suddenly a tier one tech company. Yeah. Yes, I, I guess I guess it's more for growth reasons. Like, mm. you know, a tier two one to have a tier one because of like, you know, the connections, mm. because they've seen certain things from growing a tier two to become a tier one and now going back to a tier two. Um, mm. So I think it's just a simplification, but there are mm. reasons for it. Yeah. Mm. But I, I think as long, the, the general lesson over here is that as long as you have employable skills mm -hmm. uh that's that means there's always a job for you just that maybe it will take some additional time finding a job mm -hmm. has that been true from your experience because i know you work in the tech industry for a while like generally periods whereby there's economic anxiety and, and all that do you see like it, it takes a little bit more time trying to land the right role yeah uh so uh so yes i think for all companies um be it in good times or bad times um you always want talent that um has not just the right set of skills right set of experiences but also the right attitude mm. um and perhaps like you know being able to fit in the culture Hmm. So I think regardless of, you know, the situation, they always want the best or they always want very, very good talent. So, yeah. Mm, okay. So um, I I also heard from one of our instructors that he, he has gone through the 2008 financial crisis. Mm -hmm. And that's also a very difficult time back then in Silicon Valley. Uh, and he mentioned to me that uh, this is very cyclical in nature, meaning uh, 2008 by 2010, the economy generally recovers and people start hiring again. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, what's your prediction or your estimate, you know, like of, of this, this, uh, mm -hmm. this entire... A period where it's, it's quite tough for people to get into tech. Yeah. Mm, I, I don't think it's tough to get in tech. I think it's even easier to get in tech mm. with the amount of like schools, resources online for people to get into tech. So mm. I don't I don't think that it is difficult to get in tech, but I think it may be more difficult to get into jobs because of the amount of layoffs that's happening. Mm. Uh, it might be more challenging to you know put yourself out there or like you know gain um, more attention to your profile mm. or to your resume and there might be longer recruitment um, periods mm. because they're considering a lot of candidates um, in the process um, but yeah I think for the period um, investors have been saying that you know they're expecting the next two years starting from the start of this year um, to be challenging mm. um, so perhaps yes and I think the pandemic was also around two years. Yeah, um, that's right. Yeah, so I think perhaps the same the cinema period would be two to three years. Yeah, yeah. It feels like a double whammy, right? Like we just got out of COVID, and then suddenly like this thing happened, mm -hmm. uh, where where there's so so called a recession. I think the Singapore government is also trying their best to kind of manage it at mm -hmm. the same time. Uh, to kind of shorten that phase where we're going through depression or recession. Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk about strategies. That talk, let's talk about like mistakes that you uh, you observe from candidates. You've been uh, in talent acquisition before. You, you receive a ton of CVs. Like for example, you work for 99.co as the regional talent acquisition partner. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what are some of the common mistakes that you see um, candidates making when they are sending you their CVs. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I think I will list like maybe 
four to five. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> the first one is uh, not um, not writing like a really good like resume that um, that okay, not maybe not very good, but like a basic resume that does not get binned. Mm. Um, that's one. Number two is uh, not knowing what you're applying for. Like I've gotten um, c- uh, CVs for roles that I don't think the candidate is uh is right hmm. but perhaps they think that they are suitable but there's no cover letter to explain like why, why? they applied hmm. for the role um third i think um not not responding fast enough mm, right yeah true. so yeah. like you know i email the person i have to wait two to three days and to be honest the waiting period is what you know most of the recruiters don't want to go through they want mm. to get a response almost immediately so that's why sometimes i like calling same day response yeah yes mm. um mm. i think a good tip here is that instead of the back and forth perhaps you can go back to the recruiter with some options for days and times i think sounds good that shows initiation um, the fourth one is I, I think like um, the, the, the resume is uh, formatted um, in, in a less than ideal way. I think sometimes mm. they, they get too creative. They use yeah. Canva templates. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's, it's quite a dangerous uh, a bet to make. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Um, general question, should, should we put a photo in our CV? Yeah. So uh, I would say no, because um, I think everyone, like not just recruiters, are humans and we have biases, mm. right? Uh, and so for me, like if I want to have a look at your profile, do it on LinkedIn, right? And LinkedIn is the best place to kind of check you out because mm. you have like testimonials, mm. you have like posts that you put out, you have like a profile that you can show off on LinkedIn. Yeah. Whereas for your resume, it should be, you know, simple, yeah. um, no no mistakes, no typos, um, yeah. and like no photos. That, that's a really big one. I, I, I still see CVs with grammar and uh, typo, like spelling mistakes. That's terrible. <laughs> That's terrible. So yeah. With chat GPT, you can now. <laughs> you can now write your own CV with an AI assistant. Yes. 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 But also, I think, uh, yeah, like like with all the spell checks and all that, there's no like no excuse to have like uh spelling mistakes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, talking about that, like uh, would you advise you know someone who is going to transition into tech uh, mm-hmm. to just take any job that they can find yeah uh so yes and no i think um what i tell most people to do um when you are going to you know job hunt or like you know career transition is that you should always be very aware mm. of you know the path moving forward right um for example one thing to to kind of be sure about is your finances mm. right if you're gonna be without a job um perhaps you know you should understand where you are in your finances to kind of prepare yourself if you have a job that's good um and i always tell people if possible have don't leave your job until you find out a new one Mm. um, because the you just don't need that added like stress and pressure Mm. um to um if you really need to just get a job i think that's fine but also there are certain possible consequences to that decision Mm. um especially if you don't do your own research or you don't know why you're taking the job mm. um yeah you could you could make you could have some consequences there so i don't i don't um uh, i wouldn't recommend it but if someone really needed a job and to just take one i think that's mm. fine as long as you are aware of the decision that you're making okay yeah. sounds good and i think in general, do due diligence on the team. And uh, I think just now when we were chatting, you were mentioning, like, uh, don't just talk to the founders or mm-hmm. the management team, but also try and also talk to the employees who yeah. have worked there or are working there mm-hmm. to get the full picture of the story, right? Yes. Yeah. So um, that's one, like, you know, talking to ex-employees or talking to current employees to get a a, a more fuller picture. Mm. Um, Glassdoor is not bad for, um, you know, having some of this um, information first, like tidbits mm. of the company first about their culture. Um, I think one thing to add here um, when talking about, you know, company culture and also like, you know, the companies um, is to use platforms like ADP List um, to, you know, talk to mentors, talk to people who are currently working in the companies that you want to work uh, want to work with to understand the hiring process as well. Mm. Um, and, and these people would, would like to help you out. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's, it always pays to make more friends. And in general, okay, now is a very tough environment or more competitive environment to kind of look for a role. Like what, what are some of the strategies you would suggest to stand out? Um, maybe you can share from your personal experience because I understand from yourself, you also went through uh, periods whereby it's quite tough to land on a roll. Uh, so maybe you can share a little bit more. I think before I go into that, um, mm. there are a couple of, there are two things that I also wanted to share. Mm. So one is, I think in 2019, salaries were, were, were very competitive. Mm. So com- uh, companies were trying to buy for talent, and so they over- they paid they overpaid they paid a premium. Yes, yes. they paid a premium. So yeah. right now in this climate, mm. um, you shouldn't expect to get a similar salary if mm. if you were getting a premium before. Okay. Um. Yeah. So I think that's one. Number two is um remote work. Mm. Uh. So I think a lot of companies are starting to get employees back yes. to the office. Yes. Um, so if you are looking for remote friendly options, um, just know that potentially the company might at any point in time ask you to return to the office, mm. right? Unless you check, double check with their management, like is this a policy? Like, uh, for example, I understand in DBS, they have this uh, 60-40 kind mm-hmm. of like a policy whereby they work in office three days a week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... But uh, it can change. Yeah, it could change. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. We we never know. Uh, but I think I think at least for us in QS Core, we're we're hybrid. Um, yeah, while we're working hybrid. Um, yeah. So on on your story, you you've been through some tough times yourself as a candidate looking mm-hmm. for a job. Um, what what uh, would you mind sharing what what was the experience and how do you stay strong? How do you kind of like uh stay active in in hustling yeah so in the first few years of my career um i think what i did was to go in the opposite direction of where people were going Mm. so when i first uh went into you know the workforce after graduating um a lot of people were going to finance accounting and uh yeah so i tried to do the same and i realized that i just did not get much response Mm. so I went into the opposite meaning like I went for companies in Tuas which Mm. are gas Mm. pharma Mm. um and true enough like I got a response and it was quite eager because I was probably like one of the few that applied Mm. um so that was like my first job um then as I progress, um, obviously, I also get rejections from like, you know, going to interviews and all that. I realized that part of your job hunting process or your, your journey, um, you need to understand that rejections are going to happen. Mm. And the sooner you, you, sooner you understand that and you work through your emotions and you kind of like move on, mm. the faster you get to your destination. Sounds good. I, I think it sounds very good in theory, but I've also met uh, people who have gone through multiple rejections. Mm-hmm. So it feels like they're going through like this endless cycle of like um, going through rejections and it's actually very soul crushing. Yes. Yeah. How, how would you kind of like uh, suggest to someone, you know, what, what kind of approach uh, that they should take mm-hmm. in order to slowly get out of this, you know, pit Mm. so um companies are getting smarter Mm. uh, in the hiring process so so they use like you know um crms Mm. um ats and Mm. right now they have ai Mm. um similarly for candidates there are tools to help you get smarter Mm. um so there are tools that help you um you know you, you have a laptop, you you talk in front of the camera, and then the platform is able to tell you whether you're talking too fast, talking too slow, yeah. or even give you recommendations. Mm-hmm. So I think the one most important thing that most of the time falls short in interviews are, are your presentation or like the way you speak, the way you communicate. Mm. So that's one, right? The way that you are presenting yourself in interviews is very mm. important. Um, so use the tools and platforms out there. Um, two, I think getting the basics right. So for example, your, your CV, Mm. your LinkedIn right Mm. so your CV is quite easy because you potentially can get templates from your seniors or from people who have gotten jobs Um, I think phrasing it or even like making sure that the the resume um, speaks out on your behalf Mm. uh, when uh, when a recruiter receives it is very important so use actionables use uh, metric driven uh, points if you're able to to tell a story and to also sell yourself with the resume Mm. Um, for LinkedIn I mean, there are plenty of YouTube videos to to share with you, like how you can, you know, boost it up a little bit. Okay. I think the last one is networking. 
Mm. So um, most of the times, recruiters are hiring for numerous roles. Um, so in order to get in front of the right person that's hiring, I think that would be a much bigger chance of success mm. uh, because recruiters may not see your potential, whereas someone who is hiring directly for the role for the team or for themselves can. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, those are very, very good um, tactical options mm. uh, to consider. And what about from a mindset or an attitude perspective? Do you think people who feel very down or depressed because they're not getting a job, like, uh, you know, are there any approaches that they can do to stay sane? Yeah. Mm. Uh, one is to, uh, you know, talk to people, right? Mm. Um, but at the same time, the second thing is you want to talk to the right people. Mm. Um, so there are career coaches out there and mm. I also do career coaching myself. Mm. Um, and most of the time, the career coach is to bring you through the process, yeah. right? And also to help you plan from point A to point B. Mm. Um, and, you know, for me, like what I've seen most often times is people... 80% of people uh, 80% of people out there are very scared to plan um, because it's nerve-wracking, right? Mm. Um, whereas for me, like I think oftentimes after like I've gotten through the um, fear, I just tell myself, okay, I'm gonna spend the entire day to map out point A to point B, and that's my mm. that's my strategy. So it sounds like, I, I mean, I pick out a few things based on what you just shared. Like when, when you were very early in your career, you went to the blue ocean instead of the red yes. ocean. So the red ocean is where everyone is like trying to get jobs in the CBD area and, and things like that. Um, while you plan for something different and you went, went out there to get your first initial experience. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, I, I, I think you shared some uh, strategies as well as tactics with regards to applying for jobs uh, and staying uh, strong and staying mm -hmm. sane. Uh, networking seems like something that you constantly repeat. So let's maybe like dive deeper into, into that. Um, what, what, what are some of the effective ways? If let's say I'm an introvert, like I don't like I don't like networking, right? If I'm an introvert, what what are some of the effective ways I can network with people and not come across like being too shady or salesy or like trying too hard? You know, mm. yeah. Uh, so um, the good news is, I mean, for a lot of people out there right now that are being laid off, um, a lot of uh senior or experienced people have come up to say hey like you know um i would love to you know be a be a you know a listening ear or even mm -hmm. help you through your uh, job hunting process you know just book my time on collecting oh, that's right? awesome so people are volunteering their time for coaching uh, other people's careers yes. yeah yes and mm -hmm. i think that is awesome because these people are in or, ha or have been or are in positions that can definitely connect you quicker to the right people to the yeah. right people mm -hmm. so i think that's something that you know to look out for it's kind of like an olive branch just take the olive yes. branch yeah yeah mm -hmm. and then um the other thing that you can easily do as an introvert is to talk to friends mm -hmm. uh, talk to people that you've already have relationships with um in that is working in companies that you want to check out or that you don't mind working in mm. uh, and just start off there like it can be a catch-up like mm. hey like how how are you doing you know yeah. it doesn't it, I think for most introverts they don't want to have an agenda yeah that's right, right. they feel mm. bad um, but you know most of the times people want to help you mm -hmm. um, and sometimes they get rewards because companies also have referral bonuses <laughs> especially if it's their company and they're working there yeah yes yeah some of these referral bonuses are quite good yes yeah. So, but okay. I think that's one thing I really like about the tech industry. Mm. And that's why ADP List is doing so well because people <laughs> just want to help. That's, yeah, that's yeah. that's cool. I, I We actually do encourage our students to use ADP List as well. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, since it's a free service, uh, it's great. Uh, but I also know from some of our mentors that people don't show up uh, mm -hmm. in, in some of these meetings and then like they feel like kind of down because... Uh, because the, the time is already being booked. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, I'm sure all of you here who are listening today, uh, you you have showed up here today. So I'm, I'm pretty sure you will show up if you're booking a, a mentor's time or someone who has offered to volunteer to career coach you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so sounds good. Um, and when, when we're talking about this, um, 
strategy perspective in terms of like standing out as a candidate or, or personal branding? What are some of the more unique things that you have seen people do? Like, for example, I remember last time when you used to work for 99, you, you had a very interesting candidate, right? Mm -hmm. uh, who, who, who did something extra or something, yeah. I cannot remember oh. now. <laughs> uh, was, it, was it someone who draw? Is like, is, was that like a content creator or something? I think so. Yeah. Draw. Yeah. Wow, I cannot remember. But that's okay. I think I think you share it in one of the 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 lessons uh, that you share with our students. But anyway, uh, what were some of the in more interesting ways to brand yourself, like um, as a personal brand? Because I think now, uh, with social media, with uh, so many people kind of like applying and just sending their CV across, like is that is that some kind of way to stand out? Yeah, from the sea of noise. I think branding happens a lot on LinkedIn more mm. than your resume. I see. Mm. So uh, on LinkedIn, I think, to be honest, branding is not something that you should get into first if you don't have like a, a good CV or even like if you don't, if you're not very clear on or if you do not have a good LinkedIn profile, mm. branding is very targeted. Mm. So it could give you opportunities but it could also help is it could also lead to you missing out opportunities mm. in, in, in some way okay right okay um so i think one way i've seen people brand themselves is using colors mm. like um i've seen a lady who uh who kind of left uh her full-time job to do tiktok uh consulting mm, interesting um i think she branded herself yellow like yellow everything like everything is her yellow, LinkedIn is yellow. <laughs> Her, her photo is yellow. I forgot her name, but I can remember because... Of the, the background color. of her photo is yellow. Yes, that's it. The background <laughs> okay. of her photo is yellow. Okay. Yes. Um, and I think even for her videos, um, she uses yellow a lot. So a bit like Seth. Oh, Seth Golden. Seth Golden. Yes. yes, yes. Right? Um, mm. So you can use colors. Um, For me, I, I use uh, probably a one-liner. Right, mm. I, I want to be known as someone who is a builder for like you know experiences. Uh, and for me, I'm very experience driven. Yeah. Uh, primarily for most of my HR and also my talent acquisition days have always been about experience. Yeah. Um, or even like a a talent builder or people builder for companies. So I think it's really understanding like what do you want to be known for? What are you good at? And I think that let's let's talk a little bit about that because that's interesting. That's kind of like your your tagline, right, as, mm -hmm. a, as a candidate, right, is that your value proposition. Do you figure this out on your own? Or did someone tell you, hey, Gail, like, I'm coming to you because of this? Then mm -hmm. that's that's why that's why you figure out that's your tagline. Yeah. Uh, so more of the latter. Um, mm. People telling me that, you know, um, the hiring experience with you was really, really good. Or like, you know, um, the way that you hired um, is like unlike any other. Mm. Um, they start giving me feedback. And I realized that I'm very passionate about making sure the experience is quality. Mm -hmm. um, and also similarly in my recent role, um, making sure like the experience for um, the people that was part of the program mm. um, was very important to me. And I've seen good results from that. Nice. Yes. So um, I think it comes from feedback. Mm. Um, deciding or knowing that that's a strength that you want to continue on yeah and then third thing is to make it something sellable like people actually want on and, it yeah and it, it cannot be too long and if like you say oh I'm a I, I used to do accounting and then I did this yeah uh, and, and then I did this and this then it becomes very confusing yes yeah so it has to be quite sharp and snappy and I, I think um it's it's actually similarly in in our career conversion programs or our career accelerators that's mm -hmm. also something we help our students to figure out and usually it's, it's kind of a process right where they where they share with us and then uh, we also observe like what are their strengths mm -hmm. um and like for example for me i i came to know about mine uh after my friend recommended me to work at razor mm. so she said she said dalen is only special for this thing and then uh you have to ask yourself are there many candidates like that so she said dalen has corporate and startup experience mm. right and he builds things so like can you find many candidates like that so she 
he, uh, she told my ex-manager, my friend told my ex-manager this, and then my ex-manager was like, true. <laughs> then, and I got hired for the role. So I think, yeah, it's kind of like a process of figuring that out. It's not like immediately as a fresh graduate, you you figure that out. Sometimes it's like other people telling you, mm-hmm. then uh, that's that's where you you understand your value proposition. Yep. Yeah. Um. So when when it comes to sort of like now being in in the tech sector, um, do you see any opportunities, you know, or do you see any sectors where where there's there's a lot of hiring, there's a lot of growth, you know, like where where do you think uh, people should start looking into uh, where, where it's not so affected so much by this like layoffs? Yeah. So I think one thing to be very careful of uh, when you're following trends is to do research. Mm. Um, so for example, like I mentioned, right? Um, I think a few months ago, there was a lot of like um, attention onto the metaverse, Web3. That's right. Facebook was focusing a lot of their efforts on, you know, Web3 and metaverse. Mm. Um, I think they are moving towards AI because it mm. cannot be ignored. Yeah. Um, and so when you follow trends, like, you know, you if you win, if you join a company because of Web3 mm. and you were laid off because they're moving towards AI and then you go into AI, mm. you potentially may get affected if they move on to the next trend. Right. Mm. Potentially. Um, yeah, but that's some, the risk. Yeah, that's the risk. But some other um, industries that I think uh, you, you they, people can consider are what, I think I saw on Forerunner, which is a VC, mm. called Life Changing Industries. Life Changing. Tell me, tell me more about so, it. So like climate tech, mm. agri tech, food mm. tech, mm. Um, companies that are making a difference in people's lives. Yeah. Um, I think that's something that I've seen a lot of uh, startups or even companies, mm. um, you know, doing well for hiring. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think when you mentioned those um companies, I it's it sounds like it's very on theme on this thing called sustainability, mm-hmm. right? And uh, see a lot of corporates uh, as well as consulting firms going into it at the moment. So it's quite interesting that you mentioned it. Uh, personally, I feel Singapore is also very strong in the financial services sector. Mm-hmm. So uh, it seems like there's always like hiring activities going on, whether it's, it's boom time or downtime. Yeah. Um, just that maybe the salaries are adjusted a little bit. Uh, health is also like one big, mm-hmm. big sector as well, right? I, I see a lot of um, uh, health tech startups, uh, especially during COVID, right? Yes. Uh, grew a lot, telemedicine. Uh, things like that. Um, and education, which is the sector we're in, um, mm. is, is quite evergreen as well, especially if you have an in- innovative solution. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think it's it's kind of like also understanding what interests you, mm-hmm. uh, like what industries interest you and what are the ones that has like good growth potential. Mm-hmm. Uh, I hear, I mean, I, I hear like Shopee, for example, lay, doing a lot of layoffs, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, even despite after, you know, um, during the COVID pandemic, they grew so much and there were like, yeah, like e-commerce is like this evergreen thing. We always see like sales everywhere, right? In, yep. Even the MRTs. Yeah. So yeah, should, should we avoid e-commerce companies? <laughs> uh, I won't say avoid, <laughs> yeah. but I think in the next two years, mm. um, I think these companies will be very cautionary about hiring. Mm. Um, and also like um I think they might even look to make certain um uh, what's the word bets on on trends that they cannot ignore, for example, AI. Mm. I won't be surprised if uh, TikTok or an e-commerce um goes into an AI play. I'm not surprised. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, that that would be very very interesting. Uh, wonder what that looks like. But I I think even before people talk about AI, they they should be talking about data. Yes. <laughs> yeah, like st- organizing their data, structuring their data. So actually acquiring some kind of like um skills to understand statistics or uh, being data savvy, right? Yep. Uh, like in terms of analysis, and that's pretty important as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um yeah, I was wondering like when you kind of coach career coach like um people right uh what are, what are some of the more common issues um you see for people who have difficulty like transitioning yeah uh one is getting out of the learner's mindset mm. um so i think for a lot of people who go into like a different role Mm. And then obviously they go into a period where they're learning. When they go for interviews after that, 
they probably say things like, um, you know, I'm very fast to learn. Mm. And then it comes off, especially when I'm doing practice interviews with them. Yeah. And it's very noticeable. So I think that puts them at an advantage, a disadvantage because uh, companies, especially for these career transitioners, are not likely to be very like you know junior or fresh roles. Yeah. Um. So you should come in to add value already. Yeah. So it it's it sounds like they seem kind of green when yes. they say, "Oh, I'm still learning. I'm a fast learner" or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Um. I I I have also seen some candidates say that. Uh. But what if? What would what would you propose then? Like if they they don't say like I'm a fast learner, what? other things do you, do you think they should talk about yeah. i i think you know being a uh, being a fast or, or like you know a quick learner i think that already is kind of proven when you go through that period of learning mm. to want to get a job in for example becoming a ux designer mm. so i feel like you can mention it but you don't have to emphasize on it mm. right focus on the areas where your strengths or your interests are and where you can add value mm. and what you have done especially in in Kira's core where mm. they work with clients mm. work on you know outcomes um benefits instead impact. of impact instead yeah. of mm. focusing on uh learning <laughs> like an attitude right a yeah. general attitude which is maybe like something that everyone should have yeah. yeah and kind of like common okay that that sounds good um yeah like in terms of attitude like or oh, in terms of like looking for jobs, you, do you suggest like a certain frequency? Like, you know, how many CVs should I send a day? You know, how many interviews should I at least be going through every month in order to, to be like healthy? Yeah. Uh, so I think instead of um, looking at frequency, I think mm. one should always start out with mapping it out, right? Mm. Um, you, you need to know what industries, what size of companies you're looking at, what kind of roles. Um, because if you just send out your resume, sometimes you have a mistake of sending a resume that seems templated. It mm, has not a right fit for the role. That's true. Um, I've seen a lot of those. Yeah. Yes. Or even cover letters, right? Mm. So I would say um, do some mapping, um, lay out a strategy. And I have an Excel sheet where I keep track of companies that I've contacted. Mm. Um, I even have a spreadsheet of, um, I mean, the same spreadsheet of companies that I prepare interviews for. Mm. And after the interview, I write down notes, mm. right? Or even during interviews, I tell the, inter the, the interviewer that, hey, I'm just taking down notes, mm. uh, especially if, I, if I've asked them questions and then they give me an answer. Yeah. Um, so if anyone wants to- You can do that during a remote interview, but in yes. person, you do that as well. Uh, in person, very difficult. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. But yeah, so I have that Excel sheet. If anyone wants, just let me know. Sounds good. Connect with Gil on yeah. LinkedIn and she'll send it to you. <laughs> yes. Uh, and, um, you know, kind of keep track of the companies that you've reached out to. I like to purposefully reach out to these companies mm. um, because oftentimes in the interviews, they might ask you things like, why are you here today? Mm. Why did you interview, right? Mm. Um, Sounds uh, like you're quite deliberate. Eh? So the, yes. like your, your list is not very big in no. terms of like sending out your CV. And also, when your list is not very big, you can take a better strategy. Mm. So, for example, if I really, really wanted to get into Shopee, there are a few ways I can, you know, get, um, you know, noticed, right? Mm. I did see someone, not for Shopee, um, they kind of like uh, sent out a post on LinkedIn say that, hey, like Shopee, for example, notice me, right? Mm. And a lot of people helped by commenting for reach and stuff like that mm. so that's one right if you really want to work for certain companies so badly you start thinking about ways to get noticed yeah so one is you get creative yeah. two is you try to talk to the right people mm. um, be it uh, people in the company or your friends who are currently working in the company or who can get you in yeah um, third is the way that you craft your cover letter your resume or even your emails to the recruiter um, can also be more personalized awesome yeah so we're almost at the end and i want to share some interesting strategies i've seen mm -hmm. uh, some of my students do uh, and actually it works mm -hmm. right so uh, talk about the first one uh, we, we had a student who was converting from being an interior designer to a UX designer. And he, he said um, he did a very time-consuming strategy, right? Where he actually, every company, he selected the companies he wanted to apply. Every company he applied, he sent them a case study, mm. customized for them. 
uh, on what to improve yep. for their app. And it was very, very personalized. So I asked him, hey, what's your hit rate? Or like how many people actually got back to you and asked you for, to interview? So uh, he said half of them actually do, right? Um, and half of them kind of like say thank you or something like that and, and then just ignore him. But half of them replied and eventually that was one of the ways he found a job. So I like this example because as I said, like if your list is too big, you cannot do this. Yeah. It's very difficult. That's so right. So if you have a smaller list, you can have a better strategy. That's one. Number two, even if some people don't um don't reply you or don't um, mm. you know give you an answer that you want, people remember that that's the guy that created a case study without, without ask, yeah. asking and prompting. Yeah. And that's kind of branding. Yeah, and that's very surprising. Like it's not something that everyone does. Yes. Right. So it's it's quite unique. Uh you say that he doesn't recommend it for everyone, yes. but it, it works. For, it worked for him. Uh, the second one that I've seen a number of people do, and I think it also works, is that uh, they also do a specific case study on the company, but they don't just send it to the company, but mm. they they put post it on it. their blog. They post it on their blog or on their LinkedIn, and uh, like what you say, they get some uh, reactions. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I think even one or two of them I saw like last time in DBS, uh, they got some national news coverage. Nice. Uh, and eventually they they uh he didn't get hired by the bank, but uh they they went and talked to mm -hmm. to talk to him, right? So it was it was quite interesting as well. Uh, it's kind of like it shows a lot of initiative. Yes. Yeah. In terms of doing the work, um. And the, yeah, so like, have you seen other interesting like strategies like that? Yeah. The one that I always talk about is uh, this, this lady who, who literally put her CV in a TikTok format mm. uh, and shared it on LinkedIn and say, hi everyone. Like, I really want to work for, for like TikTok. Yeah. Um, you know, please help to make this go viral. And like everybody just made it go viral. Oh my God. And then, <laughs> That was that was very very. That was cool. that was some years ago. Yeah, yes. like and and not not many people are using TikTok then. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. that that is very bold and brave. Um, what other? I mean, I've heard of people sending donuts in the US. Oh, oh, interesting. I wonder if that works. Food, food is the <laughs> way to the person's heart. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Or okay. even beer. Okay. Um, in. In that's that's another one which I um like one of uh executives that that's uh, spoken with me about and he said like when he wanted to work for a company he mm -hmm. went to talk to all the influencers and stakeholders mm -hmm. within the company like on a very casual basis because mm -hmm. now you can find everyone on LinkedIn right yep. so you can just go and talk to them and reach out to them directly and just like ask them questions and then he gradually just influenced them like. Uh, subtly to say like oh okay this is like you know like uh, I'm a good person for this role <laughs> something like that and eventually uh, because in especially in larger organizations uh, people make decisions as a as a group right so it's, uh, back door, though. <laughs> it's a bit backdoor uh, I, I think I think you call it like the amplify or, or yeah. uh, amplify strategy right so it's like kind of like amplifying uh First, you apply for the job and you're talking to the recruiter, but then you're also amplifying the, the mind share at the back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it worked smart. for him. It worked for him. Yeah. So I think it's quite creative, like in some of the ways um, that, that people are looking for, for roles. And maybe this is the kind of time that demands this kind of like creativity. Oh, there was this person that uh, I unfortunately did not respond to. I'm very sorry. Um, he, he reached out with a very eye-catching email title. Okay. Like, this is why you should hire me. Or like, uh, I wake up wanting to work for XYZ. Nice. And okay. um, I would open it and um, it's it's probably it's like a a sizable like length email um detailing you know why you know I should talk to him and stuff like that with his resume and what's interesting is that I didn't respond but a week later there will be an email say hey gentle bump in case you forgot um and then the next week there will be another email it almost seemed as if like he was using like something to send out these emails oh interesting huh? yeah, I like that. You like that? I like that. You don't. You don't find it too salesy. <laughs> um, 
but the period was um it's, the, it's quite spread out quite spread out and okay. i think the final email was the fourth one he said something like oh um i guess you're busy mm. um uh that's fine i'm just closing the loop off in, in a very like kind way yes um whereas some people Not too can pushy. Be, yeah some yeah. people can be a bit aggressive so yeah, that, that, I really like that. Those are really, really good strategies. So uh, I, I hope we shared some uh, today yeah. and that you, you get some ideas uh, that maybe you can employ and try in your career transition process as well. So maybe to end off, um, you know, let's talk about, let's go back to attitude. Do you have any tips for people to stay strong? Uh, if let's say they, are, they just got fired or, or even like they're trying to look for a new role right now, you know, what, what are some of the tips to stay mentally sane? Mm. Yeah. So one, I think, is um, I, I always go back to mapping it out um, and strategizing, right? Mm. Like why you want to a- apply for these roles or these companies. Um, two is to talk to people. Like don't be alone. Like you can talk to a career coach. You can talk to your friends or your family about it. Um, three, I think, is to network. Um, you know, get out there, talk to people. I think once you put yourself out there, you, you'll see that it's not so scary. Mm-hmm. And actually, people are willing to help you, whether it's coffee chats or even social media. Yeah. Um, the last one I would say is companies are getting smarter. So mm-hmm. you should also get smarter. And there are plenty of platforms or tools out there to help you, whether it's it videos mm-hmm. or how you practice, you know, interviews and stuff like that. That yeah. sounds great. And I'll add some. I think from for me, I'm I'm a very meta person. So mm-hmm. for me, it's very much about um fear, right? So if you're if you're not taking any action, mm-hmm. uh, there's always a lot of fear. But once you start taking action, uh, that's where you, you eliminate fear in the process because you're doing instead of thinking. And if you're thinking too much and in your, in your head too much, mm-hmm. uh, sometimes that's not the right place to go. And it can be a very dark place, especially after multiple rejections. Mm-hmm. So uh, get into the doing. Uh, please also spend some time to balance uh, out your life. You know, go, go spend time with friends. Don't just uh, coop up yourself. Uh, go talk to people. Go go exercise. Uh, exercise is always a good stress debuster. Uh, definitely advocate for that. And I, um, I wish all of you here will land on a role that you would like very, very soon. Uh, any other final words? <laughs> uh, I, as, as Dylan says, like, I think just take care of yourself. Um, I think one thing that I like to do or I find myself doing is I'll hit a rare low point in the in the career search journey and then that will be my lowest point and I'll just bounce back right up. So I think knowing when to switch off is very mm. important. Yeah. I love that. I mean, like if once you get to the lowest point, like the only way to go is up. It's up, yes. Yes. Exactly. And with that, I uh, would like to end this uh, webinar webcast session. Uh, thank you, Gil, for spending time with us today and sharing your experiences and tips. Uh, we hope you learned something. We'll actually now move on to the next uh, session, which is our WSQ Info sessions. For those of you who are looking for a course, uh, whether it's user experience design or product management, and you would like some government subsidies, as well as uh, work with a reputable education institute, uh, please stay on for this uh, call and uh, we'll be sharing more on that info session itself. Uh, so over back to our host, uh, Loges. Thank you. Dylan. Thank you so much. And thank you, Gil, for joining us today. Um, so for those who are actually um, here jo- um, with us live, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, whereby we have many other uh, webinars, you know, similar to how Gil and other industry experts have actually shared their thoughts. Um, yes, so do subscribe. And for those um, waiting to join the info session, please wait with us um, until 5 p.m. Thanks.